It is Friday, April 9th. Let's talk PlayStation. Well, we've got yet another not so great week for PlayStation, as I'm sure a lot of you are aware of, and we'll get into all that. But first, as always, we'll start with our PS Plus reminder. The April games are currently available. Make sure you grab these or add them to your library. Also, we have the PS Now editions for April as well. Um, kind of a mixed bag here, but we have Marvel's Avengers on the service until July 5th, 2021. Then Borderlands 3, that'll be available until September 29th, 2021. And then our more permanent edition is The Long Dark. And that's it, really. So only three games. Um, now, the first two sound great, actually. They're recent releases and the kind of games where, well, Marvel's Avengers is one where you might not want to spend the money on it, so that would be a great way to jump into it. But this really goes into our first news story, which is that these games do not have the PS5 version available. So that's something where if you paid for them, you're eligible for a free PS5 upgrade, and that's a native PS5 game. Uh, but for PS Now, it's only the PS4 versions. Now, there was one user I saw on Reddit or somewhere that said they were able to actually play the PS5 version. I'm not sure if there's any truth to that. I'm not seeing anybody else claim that they can actually play the PS5 versions. But for PS Now, these are the PS4 titles only, which would be fine for most people on PS4. But if you're on PS5, why would you play the PS4 version when you know there's a PS5 uh, copy available? And this might not be something to the same effect of PS Plus where we saw Final Fantasy VII Remake available as only the PS4 version. We've got other examples of Sony offering, you know, both versions like Control Ultimate Edition, right? Going to be dependent on the publisher and things like that. So I'm not really sure what the case is here, but it's something where clearly we should be talking about this because as we often discuss on Let's Talk PlayStation, we do discuss PS News, but we will talk about competing services and platforms and the industry as a whole when it is applicable. And so this is where we draw obvious comparisons to Game Pass and you know, we've said before, they're not super easy to compare because they kind of are going in two different directions. One is a lower volume amount of games, uh, but more aggressive first party releases, where Sony, it was meant to be a streaming service. It even predates Game Pass back to 2014. Now it's got downloads. And the infrastructure of how PS Now was originally, originally laid out is you've got highly customized PS3 and PS4s on a server rack, and that's how you're remotely accessing those machines to stream games. I don't necessarily know where the download link is coming from to where your PS5 is communicating with that PS4 to pull a download link from there, if it's just doing it directly through the PS Store and it should know that, hey, you're entitled to this PS5 version. I'm not entirely sure. It does look very polarizing though, given that you are allowed to grab Series S and Series X versions on Game Pass in a situation where a third-party game is offered over there. Now, you all know at this point, I'm one of the few people that will actually give PS Now a slight voice in that. It's not that terrible, but at the same time, it's not great. There's a very solid foundation there in terms of Sony being able to offer a really compelling service, consolidate with PS Plus, add more games, get more aggressive with the library, uh, start using remote PS5 consoles. I mean, there's a lot that they can do with it, and yet it's just kind of sitting there largely unchanged. I am still guessing that at some point we'll see a major shakeup and uh, a revamp or relaunch, if you will, but right now that's not what we have, and that's why we're seeing weird things like this. With that said, we can segue nicely into our next news story, which I'm sure a lot of you probably saw this. It was a big one. MLB The Show 21 is launching day and date on Game Pass, whereas on PlayStation, it's the traditional model of paying for it. So 60 on PS4, 70 on PS5, 85 for both copies. And to be fair, this is a similar pricing structure on Xbox if you, if you did want to own it outright. But if you're on Series S or X, then it's really more preferable to just subscribe to Game Pass for $10 at a minimum, and then you get the game that way. And that really is... A compelling model for what is a annual sports game because for most consumers that buy these titles they often have to buy these games right away for the roster update and for it to be you know somewhat relevant by the time they wait for the game to, to devalue it's already close to the next release so this actually works out quite well but given the circumstance it looks rather embarrassing on PlayStation's part. You've got a long-standing exclusive that's now, well, we knew it was going to Xbox, but now it's also going to their competing service where they're practically, quote-unquote, handing it out for next to nothing, a very low monthly fee, which is very favorable to the consumer. And Sony, we knew back in 2019 that the game was coming to Xbox. That was the stipulation re-signing with the MLB Association. Sony reluctantly agreed to this. So we can't quite chalk it up to... I'm seeing some people chalk it up to like, oh, well, Sony's okay with it because they collect the paycheck. And sure, they probably do to some degree because they're making the game. And that's the point of uh, re-signing and being okay with putting it on other platforms. But we can't quite say it's like how Sony does second party deals and they go to PC or their own first party games going to PC. PC is a very agnostic platform where they can see that that's not necessarily harming 
their bottom line and it's only it's only helping it at the end of the day this i mean they they absolutely if they could if they had it their way would not be shipping on xbox or allowing the game to be available on game pass which i'm also guessing probably caught them off guard and so it looks very awkward from their point of view to now have this situation be presented but of course this is a short-term situation so a lot of people are talking about it just due to what it actually is but this is also a yearly game which it does well every single year that it comes out but it also comes and goes most people don't go crazy over what is an annual sports game that's largely popular in North America, right? So really it's not all too bad when you look at it rationally, but it's still, there's no excusing the fact that Sony's in a really awkward position with this particular game. And I'm sure down the road we'll see it uh, offered on Plus or, or now, but at least in terms of a day one release, Sony's going with the traditional model and they're sticking to it. And that just um, puts them in a very awkward position. Now, we will talk more about how Sony's been in that very poor position the past few months, but first we should also probably go over this, which is uh, Abandoned, a new PS5 indie exclusive that was announced over on the PS blog very recently. It was described and shown off as a realistic survival game in every sense of the word, so whether you're firing a gun or reloading or taking damage or falling over, it's very slow and methodical. And the trailer looks pretty good, actually. It's not super impressive. In fact, if you pay attention to the visual oddities and even to voice acting, it's a little bit phoned in. It's not great, but it's also not terrible. Uh, you can just tell that this very much is a smaller scale game from a smaller studio, uh, Blue Box Game Studios. But some people looked into the studio thinking, I've never heard of them before. Why do they have no social media presence? Oh, here's a failed Kickstarter. Wait, here's a game on Steam. Oh wait, look at the uh, game's director. His initials would be HK, Hideo Kojima. What's going on here? Is this a secret Hideo Kojima project being announced in typical Kojima fashion? Which. To be fair, that is how he's done it before with things like PT and Metal Gear Solid 5. So I can see where people maybe jump the gun a little bit, but we did see Blue Box Game Studios have to come out and formally acknowledge that, wait, hold on, hold on, we're not actually Kojima or anything like that. We really are a small team. Uh, we've been working on this title for three years and, well, we're very excited to show this off and it was a little bit disappointing that this had to be the circumstance that our game found itself in, which I do feel bad for them because now all the attention is going to be taken away from this game. Uh, just as a reminder, we will actually learn more about it quite soon. There should be a demo and um, gameplay reveal and the title's actually slated for later this year. So we'll see how that actually pans out, but it was not a Hideo Kojima project. Now, on the flip side of this, we actually got the exact opposite, which is Games Beat reporter Jeff Grubb publishing an article stating that Kojima's next project is likely being worked on with Microsoft in terms of a publishing deal. So not acquiring the studio, but rather on a per title basis, one of their games is being uh, being worked on with Microsoft directly for funding and, and in all likelihood exclusivity. And this is kind of what I was getting at in last week's episode or two weeks ago whenever I mentioned it, but the Ludens figure next to the Xbox logo, it's kind of what I was trying to warn people about is that there is some significance to that. And that's what Jeff Grubb mentions in the article. And he's had an excellent track record up to this point. Keep in mind, he's a reporter. He's gotten certain things wrong. That all depends on his sources, but uh, largely he has a lot of connections with the Microsoft camp so that's kind of why this story came out and we've had a lot of stories prior from him with microsoft related news but that's where we are right now and keep in mind with kojima productions we are expecting more than one title out of them they have expressed interest in doing more than one game like a smaller scale episodic thing alongside a full scale release and then we're still at some point looking forward to a death stranding extended edition but it looks like microsoft will be involved with at least one of those two projects and yeah, people are not exactly thrilled about this. It seems like a lot of consumers obviously had a, an association and an expectation of Kojima still working with Sony based off of that long working relationship or the 2015 deal that turned into Death Stranding. But we have to remember that as of right now, Kojima Productions is an independent studio, as in they can work on something and then shop that around to any publisher and any platform holder. And whatever the best deal is, is probably the one that's going to win. So... You know, brand loyalty doesn't really mean much when we're talking about the actual business of the games industry. And so we can't even necessarily say that this was Sony's fault or they did something wrong. We don't really know, right? I mean, Sony might not have even offered a publishing deal to begin with. They either looked at it and said, no, nah, we'll pass. Or maybe they did offer something and it just wasn't good enough. Maybe they did offer something, but there were some stipulations. Maybe they're involved in a separate project with him. Maybe they're not involved or interested whatsoever. We just have no idea whatsoever. Sony obviously evaluates 
second party deals all the time. And Kojima's next game is something that I'm sure they probably looked at, but um, for whatever reason, right now at least, we're looking at one with Microsoft. So having covered all that and everything up to this point, what is going on with PlayStation? It's been a perfect storm of bad news for Sony, good news for Microsoft doing amazing things with Game Pass. Sony, on the other hand, has had the Japan Studio restructure, save files not working all that great from PS4 to PS5, closing the PS3, Vita, PSP stores, the MLB situation, the PS Now situation, now this Kojima story. Sony's silence is deafening, they're not saying anything, Jim Ryan bad this, Jim Ryan bad that. So let's really just settle down for a second and understand that we should look at this more holistically and broadly speaking, not in some sort of tunnel vision way to fit a narrative of how Sony's doing so poor. The company just came off their best fiscal year. They're not having a problem selling PS5s or shipping big budget high caliber games that sell really well. And that's always been their, their strength, of course. Now I will say, they're being put in an awkward position in many respects, and that is the great thing about competition. I've always said a healthy Microsoft is going to make a healthy Sony and vice versa, and that's really the situation here that we need to understand is that Microsoft is playing catch up, not Sony. My concern with this company has always been, don't get complacent, and we might be seeing a little bit of that, and that's not what I want, that's not the direction I want the company to go in. But it's so easy to forget things after you know what four or five months it seemed like sony had all the momentum in the world going into ps5 whereas microsoft had nothing for series x and s because a lot of their uh, showcases were pretty underwhelming halo infinite had that poor gameplay reveal and then it got delayed and that was like you know does nobody remember how bad that looked for microsoft and now that's all gone because they're reactionary they're quick and they're doing everything possible to make that platform look better and more compelling versus their competitor. And if Sony really does find themselves losing market share, they'll make sure that they'll do something about that. But the thing is too, Sony hasn't actually done much of anything wrong with PS5. It's actually a great machine right off the top. Like I'm seeing some people compare this to a Don Matrix 2013 scenario. It's nowhere even remotely close to that. This console's super successful. It's got some great software coming up. It plays PS4 games better than ever. It's just by comparison of Sony silence and Microsoft talking so much about Game Pass or whatever else, that's where you know the mindshare thing starts to shift and PS5 looks inherently bad. I mean, this actually played greatly to PS3 in that late life cycle versus 360. Microsoft was doing all sorts of weird things with Kinect and stuff um, where Sony was putting out exclusive after exclusive. Um, and the mindshare thing, well, that's what affects people. They often forget about what happened two years ago, one year ago, or six months ago. But Sony actually hasn't done bad with PS5. It's a fairly conservatively approached console in that they're regular priced games. PS Now is just sitting there doing nothing, but we have events coming. We have state of plays that are on the way. We have software coming. Just you know, relax. It, it will more than likely get better. Now, moving on to our next news story. Do you remember about one or two years ago, we had a lot of stories regarding Sony and Remedy and something happening between the two. We just didn't know what, whether it was acquisition talks or an exclusive game deal, we weren't sure, but we saw Sony visiting Remedy on a number of occasions. And now we're seeing that Claire Bromley, the external producer at XDev and also PlayStation Productions has been sharing job offerings from Remedy on her LinkedIn. That doesn't sound too unusual, but she's actually done this before with Sumo Digital working on Sackboy Big Adventure and also Housemark for Returnal, both second party situations. So maybe that's something that is being worked on with Remedy because we do know that Remedy has five projects in the works right now, uh, two of them being signed with Epic. Um, one of them is a live service game, I believe, and then one is the Crossfire campaign, and then one is the Control Team, which we don't really know what they're doing. The publisher could potentially be Sony if that is what was happening you know, two years ago when we saw that stuff actually unfolding online. That would certainly answer a lot of the speculation that we had back then. And we do know at this point, Sony loves doing those second party deals. It's your standard contract work, but Sony keeps the IP. It's a full exclusive. Maybe it ends up going to PC eventually, but we do know that Sony's been doing a lot of this stuff. And for Remedy, that would actually make a lot of sense. 
Moving on to our next news story, PS5 timed exclusive Deathloop has been delayed again, unfortunately, this time from May to September 14th. So it is still coming out this year, but COVID has once again played a major role in the delay here. They are still working from home, so that's the reason cited. They need more time to get this game up to polish and making sure that it's good by the time it comes out. That's totally reasonable. So not too bad there. In fact, if you were planning on picking up Mass Effect in May, then you've got a lot, you've got a lot of breathing room because let's face it, three Mass Effect games you're going to lose a lot of weekends to that. <laughs> Next up in unsurprising news, E3 2021 has been confirmed as a digital-only event, so no in-person gathering at the convention center. Uh, we didn't have one last year at all, though. Most publishers just did their own thing online alongside the console manufacturers because they were launching brand new machines, so pretty much everything was online last year. But still online this year, we've got a number of big publishers that are attached and um, Sony will not be attending like they haven't been since well before COVID so their last show is 2018 so it's not nothing about this is surprising we're going to get something out of Sony but it's in all likelihood going to look like a live stream that might not even be a more traditional short form state of play they will presumably have a longer live stream that could be an hour hour and a half that's kind of the the expectation and that's where we could see um, Sony really make some of these big moves that a lot of people are waiting for the company to to do for our next news story sony secured ps5 is the official console of the nba 2k league meaning anytime these players or teams are playing it's on playstation 5 and i am quite surprised at this point that sony's taking esports this seriously uh, i think on its own this would have been kind of like a whatever announcement but align this with the evo acquisition and it paints a better picture of what sony's been doing which is taking esports very seriously and to be fair this is a sector that grows every single year there's a lot of engagement it gets bigger and bigger uh, so i can see why they want to get involved it's just something that i never really thought they'd be doing but with fighting games it makes sense um, if they're the lead platform on some of these you know typical third party annual sports games also makes sense or certainly you want that association to be there for what is uh, a high volume third party game that comes out every single year you want that mindshare, you want that brand association, and that's what Sony's going for. Moving on to our next news story, it looks like the PS5 stock situation is improving in Japan. They've steadily allocated more stock over there versus launch where there wasn't a whole lot to go around, but PS5 is still hard to find anywhere, so it's not like you can easily find a PS5 if you're in Japan, but the past few weeks they've been doing anywhere from 35,000 to recently up to 65 or 68,000 consoles, somewhere around there, but PS5 lifetime sales in Japan is now about 580,000, which launch aligned with other machines, it's not that much better, of course. In fact, it's still quite poor, but uh, we do have to remember there's just that huge global semiconductor shortage which is not helping at all doesn't matter where you are you can't really find a ps5 but one additional note we can say here is that in the uk ps5 has now passed lifetime sales of the dreamcast playstation vita and the wii u that didn't take very long at all not at all surprising uh but that just shows you how poorly those platforms did certainly over their lifetime in that particular territory or it also just speaks more about how quickly playstation 5 is selling despite what is a massive stock and demand shortage. Now, next up, we've got some rumors regarding more projects out of PlayStation Productions, as reported by GiantFreakingRobot.com, which I have no idea if this site is super reliable, but apparently they have proven sources on these two projects that are coming, and it sounds somewhat reasonable, but we've got apparently a Horizon movie in the works and a Demon Souls movie. Now, the Demon Souls movie was reported two weeks ago. I did see that, and I was like, ah, it doesn't seem very appropriate or makes a whole lot of sense. It'll just turn into a fantasy movie. Um, won't really be much of, like, Demon Souls. Horizon, however, I'm like, all right, well, that I could see that happening if they put a substantial budget behind it and they do crazy good CGI and just you go all in with this blockbuster movie that's going to wow people. I mean, you really have to put all your money into that to make it work but we do know there's a lot of projects still in the pipeline and those are two candidates that might actually be coming now one other note here actually is that sony signed with netflix for an exclusive deal to release their movies in 2022 and beyond on netflix after a theatrical release so this would actually include some of the movies coming out of playstation productions which is not too bad so these movies would still release through cinema first if that's even allowed in 2022 we're not entirely sure would highly depend on you know the country the state the county all that stuff 
But uh, after the theatrical run, then it would go to Netflix. So you have an opportunity to watch a bunch of Sony Picture movies, but also uh, even the PlayStation production stuff, which would actually be quite good if you don't want to pay for these. Well, you'd still be paying for a Netflix subscription, but you, you get my point. Now, with all that said, it is time to get to Let's Talk Plus, the weekly Let's Talk PlayStation giveaway where one of you can win a $10 PSN code. I would like to congratulate this viewer right here. I'll be contacting you very soon via email or Twitter. If you would like to win a $10 PSN code, it's very easy. Follow the link down below. Supporting this channel a number of ways can gain you an entry, and I'll announce the winner next week because I'm trying to pay for your games. Those are all the news stories that I want to talk about with you all. Our Tuesday video was PlayStation Vita Online in 2021. I cannot believe we can still keep doing this, but I don't know if we can do it next year. I mean, not to say that PSN connectivity will cease on Vita, but rather there's not many games to choose from. So I feel like per title, the servers will start closing. But hey, there are still people on there. Go check that out. And as always, this coming Tuesday, you can expect another upload here on this channel. Who knows what it'll be, but you can expect another video as always. And that is it. That concludes this week's episode of Let's Talk PlayStation. I'm Ryan Panecki. Thank you all so much for talking with me, and I will see you all next Friday.